Hello, welcome to the video lecture series on digital image processing in a 3D coordinate system. Uh, where the coordinate system and the camera coordinate system are not perfectly aligned. In that case, what are the set of transformations which are to be applied to the points in the 3D world coordinate system, which will be transformed in the form as seen by a camera. Then followed by that, if we apply the perspective transformation, then we get the image coordinate for different points in the 3D world coordinate system. So, what you have seen in the last class is once we have the image points in an image plane, how to apply the inverse perspective transformation to get the equation of the state line, so that the points on that state line map to a particular image point on the imaging plane. Then we have seen a generalized imaging geometry where the world coordinate system and the camera coordinate system are not aligned. And we have also discussed the set of transformations which are involved in such generalized imaging setup. And then we have also seen how to find the image coordinate for any arbitrary point in the 3D world coordinate system in such a generalized imaging setup and the concept we have illustrated with the help of an example. In today's lecture, we will see that given an imaging setup, how to calibrate the camera and then we will also explain the concept of how to extract the 3D point from two images, which is also known as stereo images. So, in the last class that we have done is, we have given an imaging setup like this, where the 3D world coordinate system is given by capital X, capital Y and capital Z. In this world coordinate system, we had placed a camera, where the camera coordinate system is given by small x, small y and small z. And we have assumed that the camera is placed, is mounted on a gimbal, where the gimbal is displaced from the origin of the world coordinate system by a vector w naught and the center of the camera is displaced from the gimbal by a vector r. The camera is given a pan of angle theta and it is also given a tilt of angle alpha. And in such a situation, if w is a point in the 3D world coordinate system, we have seen that how to find out the corresponding image point corresponding to point w in the image plane of the camera. So, for that we have done a set of transformations and with the help of the set of transformations what we have done is, we have brought the 3D world coordinate system and the camera coordinate system in alignment. And after the 3D world coordinate system and the camera coordinate system are perfectly aligned with that set of transformations, then we have seen that we can find out the image point corresponding to any 3D world point by applying the perspective transformation. So, the type of transformations that we have to apply is, first we have to apply a transformation for the displacement of the gimbal center from the origin of the 3D world coordinate system by vector w naught, followed by a transformation corresponding to the pan of x axis of the camera coordinate system by theta, which is to be followed by a transformation corresponding to tilt of the z axis of the camera coordinate system by angle alpha. And finally, the displacement of the camera image plane with respect to gimbal center by vector r. So, the transformations, the first transformation which translates the gimbal center from the world origin of the world coordinate, coordinate system by vector w naught is given by the transformation matrix G, which is in this case 1 0 0 minus x naught, 0 1 0 minus y naught, 0 0 1 minus z naught and 0 0 0 1. The pan of the x axis 
of the camera coordinate system by an angle theta is given by the transformation matrix r theta, where r theta in this case is cosine theta, sin theta 0 0, then minus sin theta, cosine theta 0 0, then 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 1. Similarly, the tilt, the transformation matrix corresponding to the tilt by an ang angle alpha is given by the other transformation matrix R alpha, which in this case is 1 0 0 0, 0 cosine alpha sin alpha 0, then 0 minus sin alpha cosine alpha 0 and then 0 0 0 1. Then the next transformation we have to apply is the transformation of the center of the image plane with respect to gimbal center by the vector r. So, if we assume that r has the components, the vector r has components r 1, r 2 and r 3 in x, y along the x direction, y direction and z direction of the 3D world coordinate system then corresponding transformation matrix with respect to this translation is given by t equal to 1 0 0 minus r 1, 0 1 0 minus r 2, 0 0 1 minus r 3 and then 0 0 0 1. We have also seen in the last class that the rotation matrices r theta and r alpha can be combined together to give a single transformation matrix r which is nothing but the product of r alpha and r theta. Now, once we get <coughs> this transformation matrices, then after the transformation first by the translation matrix G, then by the rotation matrix R, followed by the tra second translation matrix T, what we do is we align the coordinate system of the camera with the 3D world coordinate system. That means, now every point in the 3D world will have a transformed coordinate as seen by the camera coordinate system. So, once we do this, then finally, applying the perspective transformation to these three dimensional world coordinate systems gives us the coordinate of the point in the image plane for any point in the 3D world coordinate system. <coughs> so, here you find the final form of the expression is like this, that both the world coordinate system and the camera coordinate system in this case they are represented in the homogeneous form. So, w h is the homogeneous coordinate corresponding to world coordinate w and c h is the homogeneous form of <coughs> the image coordinate c. So, for a world point w whose homogeneous coordinate is represented by w h, here you find that I can find out the image coordinate of the point w again in the homogeneous form, which is given by this matrix equation that c h is equal to p, t, r, g and w h. And here you note that each of these transformation matrices that is p, t, r and g all of all of them are of dimension 4 by 4. So, when I multiply all these matrices together to give a single transformation matrix, then the dimension of that transformation matrix will also be 4 by 4. So, what we have now <coughs> is of this form. So, after doing this transformation, I can find out the image coordinate of the corresponding point w where x and y coordinates will be given by these expressions. So, after doing this what I have is <coughs> I have an equation transformation equation or a matrix equation. So, that for any world point w I can find out what is the homogeneous coordinate of homogeneous coordinate of the image, image point corresponding to that particular point w. Now, the transformation which is involved that is p, t, r and g as we said that each of these transformation matrices are, are of dimension 4 by 4. So, the combined transformation matrix if I represent this by a matrix A 
then this matrix A will also be a 4 by 4 matrix. And now, the entire transformation equation in matrix form will be C H is equal to A into W H. Now, find that given a particular setup, the transformations T, R and G, they depend upon the imaging setup. Say G corresponds to translation of the gimbal center from the origin of the 3D world coordinate system, R corresponds to pan angle and the tilt angle and T corresponds to translation of the image plane center from the gimbal center. So, these three transformation matrices depend upon the geometry of the imaging system, whereas the other transformation matrix that is P or perspective transformation matrix, this is <coughs> entirely a property of the camera, because we will find that the components of this transformation matrix P has a term lambda, which is equal to the wavelength or uh, the focal length of the camera. So, it is possible that for a given camera for which the focal length lambda is known, I can find out what is the corresponding perspective transformation matrix P. Whereas, to find out the other transformation matrices like T, R and G, I have to do the measurement physically that what is the translation of the gimbal center from the, cent from the origin of the 3D world coordinate system, what is the pan angle, what is the tilt angle. I also have to measure physically that what is the displacement of the image center, image plane center from the gimbal center. And in many cases, measuring these quantities are not very easy and it is more difficult if the imaging setup is changed quite frequently. So, in such cases it is always better that you first have an imaging setup and then try to calibrate the imaging setup with the help of the images of some known points of 3D objects that will be obtained with the help of the same imaging setup. So, by calibration what I mean is, as we said that now I have a combined transformation matrix for the given imaging setup which is A, A which is nothing but the product of P, T, R and G. So, this being a 4 by 4 matrix, what I have to do is I have to estimate the different element values of this matrix A. So, if I can estimate the different element values of the total transformation matrix A from some known images, then given any other point in the 3D, I can find out what will be the corresponding image point. Not only that, if I have an image point, a point in the image by applying the inverse transformation, I can find out what will be the equation of the state line on which the corresponding world point will be lying. So, this calibration means that we have to estimate the different values of this matrix A. Now, let us see how we can estimate these values of the matrix A. So, here you find that uh, we have this matrix equation which is of this form that is C H is equal to A into W H. <coughs> where we have said that W H is the world coordinate of the 3D point put in homogeneous form and C H is the image point on the image plane again in the homogeneous form and A is the total transformation matrix. So, here if the world point W has the coordinates say x, y and z, the corresponding homogeneous coordinate system will be given by W H is equal to some constant k times x, some constant k times y, some constant k times z and the fourth element will be k. So, this will be the homogeneous coordinate W H corresponding to the point W. Now, without any loss of generality, I can assume the value of k equal to 1. So, if I took take k equal to 1 and if I expand this matrix equation, then what I get is I get the components say C H 1, C H 2, 
C H 3, C H 4, this will be, now I expand the matrix A also. So, A will have components say A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 3, A 1 4, A 2 1, A 2 2, A 2 3, A 2 4, A 3 1, a 3 2, A 3 3, A 3 4, then A 4 1, A 4 2, A 4 3, <coughs> A 4 4 into the homogeneous coordinate of the point in the 3D uh, space which is now x, y, z and 1. So, you remember that we have assumed the value of k to be equal to 1. So, I get a matrix equation like this. Now, from this matrix equation, I have to find out or I have to estimate the component values a 1 1, a 1 2, a 1 3 and so on. Now, here once I have the homogeneous image coordinates as c h 1, c h 2, c h 3 and c h 4 then we have already discussed that the corresponding Cartesian coordinate in the image plane is given by x equal to c h 1 divided by c h 4 and y is given by c h 2 divided by c h 4. So, this is simply a conversion from the homogeneous coordinate system to the Cartesian coordinate system. <coughs> now, here if I replace <coughs> the values of C H 1 and C H 2 by x times C H 4 and y times C H 4 in our matrix equation, then the matrix equation will look like x C H 4, y C H 4, then C H 2, let it remain as it is, then finally, we have C H 4 this will be equal to a 1 1, a 1 2, a 1 3, a 1 4, a 2 1, a 2 2, a 2 3, a 2 4, a 3 1, 3 2, a 3 3, a 3 4, a 4 1, a 4 2, a 4 3, A 4 4 multiplied by the 3 D point coordinate in homogeneous form which is x, y, z 1. <coughs> so, if I expand this uh, matrix equation, what I get is x C H 4 will be given by a 1 1 x plus a 1 2 y plus a 1 3 z plus a 1 4, then y c h 4 will be equal to a 2 1 x plus a 2 2 y plus a 2 3 z plus a 2 4 and C H 4 is given by A 4 1 x plus A 4 2 y plus A 4 3 z plus A 4 4. Now, find that while doing this matrix equations or while trying to solve this matrix equations, we have ignored the third component in the image, uh, image point. That is because the third component corresponds to the z value and we have said that for this kind of calculation, the z value is not important to us. Now, from this given three equations, what we can do is, we can find out what is the value of C H 4 in terms of x, y, z 
and if I replace this value of C H 4 in the earlier two equations, then these two equations will simply be converted in the form A 1 1 x plus A 1 2 y plus A 1 3 z minus A 4 1 x small x capital X minus A 4 2 small x capital Y minus A 4 3 small x capital Z plus A 1 4 this is equal to 0 and A 2 1 capital X plus A 2 2 capital Y plus A 2 3 capital Z minus a 4 1 small x small y capital X minus A 4 2 small y capital Y minus A 4 3 small y capital Z plus A 2 4 this is equal to 0. So, these two equations are now converted in this particular form. Now, if you study these two equations, you find that x and y small x and small y are the coordinates in the image plane of a point in the 3D world coordinate system whose coordinates are given by capital X, capital Y and capital Z. So, if I take a set of images for which the point in the 3D world coordinate system that is capital X, capital Y and capital Z are known and I also find out what is the corresponding image point, image coordinate in the image plane, then for every such pair of readings I get two equations. One is the first equation, other one is the second equation. Now, if you study this particular, uh, these two equations, you find that there are six unknowns. The unknowns are one is A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 3, A 4 1, A 4 2, A 4 3, A 1 4, A 2 1, A 2 2, A 2 3, then you have A 2 4. So, the number of unknowns we have in these equations are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So, the 11 or 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I have missed something. sorry there should be one more term minus here there should be one more term minus a 4 4 x and here should be one more term minus a 4 4 y. So, this a 4 4 this is another term. So, there are 12 unknowns. So, for solving these 12 unknowns we need 12 different equations and for every known point in the 3D world I get two equations. So, if I take such images for six known points, then I can find out. Thank you.